the first word that comes to my head is, is just the value of it. The value of this project is it, it's it's you can't duplicate it. You know, this is as good as it gets for this for this type of thing. I've never owned <coughs> a longboard ever. I've always had shortboards. Um, but now that I have kids, they got to learn. And uh, it, a longboard is was the only way to go to get the kids on the front and be able to have me paddle with them. So and when you grow up around water, it's it doesn't go away. It's impossible. <laughs> and then coming back, and you know, we'd always come down and we'd go to Catalina and spearfish out there. You know, and we'd we'd come down here and surf every once in a while. But uh, the consistency of being in the water all the time <clears throat> is it's just a, it's a head clear. And I, raising kids, I didn't want them not to grow up away from the water. You have to have that. I mean, you spend every single day, you know, when the weather's good at the beach. Even when it's not good. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, I shouldn't even say that. It's just, we're there all the time. There's something about... You know, I think for me it was growing up around the ocean, um, and I want them to have that same privilege that I had. Mm -hmm. So being in the water for me is just, it's, it's absolutely essential to live. I wasn't gonna buy a blank, paint it, clear coat it, you know, like most people do. I wanted to start from scratch. This is our board, so. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go to Kyle to yeah. get the board shape. So I went to him first to figure out a, a time on that, and then obviously to you to see if you wanna be involved. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think I just started my Instagram where I was posting a few boards that I had recently done, and Cam reached out to me, and he was like, hey man, I got an idea, I wanna, make this board for my kids which I mean my I grew up surfing because my dad surfed you know like and because my brother surfed so growing up like I always had boards in the house that I would look at and wow I can't can't wait till I'm older and I can ride those you know uh, I remember my dad had these two single fins that my brother and I learned on from day one so just the idea of it where Cam was like yeah like I want something that my kids can kind of look at and kids can use or I can take them out on it I was like, I just want them to have something to learn on. And I think he even said, he's like, I want something that they're going to be able to keep and something I can hand down to them. And I think that, I thought that was pretty awesome, you know, where I was just like, kind of touches home for you, where yeah. um, just growing up in a surf family and then passing it down to your kids, I think it's a pretty special thing to do. Kind of got the ball rolling really quick, where I think as soon as Cam and I talked, he was like, oh yeah, Josh is in and he wants to do a video about it. And I was like, Okay, yeah, like, <laughs> this is getting sweeter and sweeter, like, let's, yes. let's make it happen. sky white and maybe do the clouds in like a teal or an aqua mm. just to get a little more a little more color on here the uh it, that's it right there i don't know if you can see it but uh the family tree is a it's a it's it's not a saguaro cactus but there's a off of that family of cactus that grow in baja so Spent a lot of time in Baja growing up, a lot of time surfing and diving down there. And uh, 
obviously have a lot of cactus in my yard and stuff like that. So it was easy, it was cool to come up with that as the idea of the family tree. So each one of the offshoots from that cactus represents a member of the family. Myself, Parker, Sawyer, and Cammy. So that was the idea behind that. And then obviously, just a very basic sketch. Hurricane Sandy hit where we, I mean, my dad's boards, my brother's boards, where we probably had 12 or 15 boards at that point, you know. Um, Hurricane Sandy hit and just wiped out our house, and we found like two pieces of two boards that we had. Actually, the first board that I'd shaped, yeah. found like the tail of it, and then a board that my brother and I had just gotten my dad. It was a boneyard boards, I think. So, fuck, then we just didn't have any of them, you know? Like, go from having so many to choose from and then having none. Yeah. And, God, buying a board in the shop is just so expensive, you know? It's ridiculous. So, at that point, I was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to start shaving and shape my own. Because yeah. I didn't have the money to be dropping seven, dollars $800 on new boards, you know? Yeah. So, that was probably the catalyst that really set it in motion. Kyle's, a, you know, he's a younger kid. He, he moved out here, you know? He's trying to make it work and and I figure why not you know why not him him do it yeah. you know I painted that you know just a quick spray silhouette that we did on the finless board when I first met him uh, at art in the park and uh, and then after that I went on to have him shape uh, the lizard board right there which is a little it's a little kind of hybrid uh, that he shaped for me about a year ago and then it was you know, now the, the yeah. log project. something I'm kind of playing with now. I just want people to see my boards and think, wow, I want to ride that. Because yeah. I think that's, like when I see cool surfboards that make me want to surf, and I try and shape boards only that I would like to surf, I think that's what I would, I want people to, that's what I want people to think when they see a board that I've made. So like, damn, I want to surf that. It's a pretty rad process. Um, it's crazy because like the first, 30 or 40 boards I did, I did everything. I shaped, I glassed, I sanded. And then I came out here and once I started shaving at that shop, I was kind of telling him like, hey, like I'm kind of new, I'm trying to get into it. And he's like, and Steve um, from Aloha was like, so what do you do, do you shape, do you glass or do you polish? I was like, well, I kind of do it all. And he's like, no, nobody does it all. Like you do one. <laughs> so that kind of opened my eyes to like, all right, I guess I don't need to do it all. But I think it's once you kind of start to sand the rails and turn the rails down where it starts to look like a surfboard. And it's like, you can kind of see glimpses of it. And it's like, all right, this is kind of starting to come together. And then like, once you really start to fine tune the rails and it's just, it really looks like a surfboard. And that's probably the best part. You can kind of start to see the finished product. You're trying to make something circle out of a square, yeah. which is way harder than I ever thought it would be. <laughs> It's kind of sick to see your projects come to life and, and even to shape something that brings somebody joy, you know, or somebody calls you back to, oh, okay, just caught a sick wave on that board, the board rides so good. That's always probably the ultimate satisfaction for a shape right there. Oh, 
to sum up this whole project into a word, a statement, or a phrase, what would that be? Wow. Um, I, I don't know. The whole project uh, in itself to me is a uh, I would say it's just, it's just uh, the first word that comes to my head is just the value of it. The value of this project is it's it's you can't duplicate it. You know, this is as good as it gets for this for this type of thing.